All right, YouTubers, I'm here with my new project. I'm expanding my lithium iron phosphate battery pack. I got this battery several months ago, and I'm in the process of putting them together. I got 16 batteries here for a 16S system. I'm using for this project this Ryobi box. It's kind of nice. It's about 50 bucks. So my 16 lithium iron phosphate fit kind of neat on it. I put this foam just to ensure that they don't move at all. They are kind of tight together. This is the battery layout that uh, I will be using for this project. Okay? Be aware of that. Uh, for the battery that I'm, I'm using, uh, I bought 16 batteries of 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery as shown here from Ryko uh, website and uh, I also got the BMS, the daily BMS also from this site and all the parts that I needed including the the bus bar and the bolt I'm sorry and the nuts and everything and the terminals for the BMS and uh, the nice thing about this battery they are, they are called Calv if you know a little bit about uh, battery this is a good battery although it is sort of like a, an uh, aluminum termination so they are not a thick plastic that this calcer the original calcer I used to see them with this very thick plastic covering them protecting them but uh, so far I will say I would not complain they look good and they do what they supposed to uh, the information for these batteries are basically here uh, maybe you are interested on this size. Let's see right here with uh, 160 millimeters a high 110 and the pulse spacing and the weight about 1.82 kilograms and They are cheaping this about 3.2 volts a little bit higher although the label said 100 amp hour so But that's basically it. That's all the information that you need again this I bought the batteries from Strico, uh website and uh, the guy is very good. I mean, if you work with him, all the details that you need to work with him. What I'm saying is this battery were cheaper from, I don't know, somewhere in Illinois down to Puerto Rico. That took a while and that's another video altogether. And, uh, but he was very helpful in ensuring that I got my batteries the way it's supposed to. All right. Right now, I'm in the process of building the cable for the BMS, and the BMS, as you can see, they are well numbered, so we can ensure that they connect properly to each battery. Right now, I'm in the process of installing the bus bar, and. Uh, And we're gonna check right now the voltage of each battery to ensure that they are about uh, 3.2 voltage range each one so right now I'm gonna be documenting the voltage of each battery so this is gonna be the voltage of battery one 3.245 battery one that's perfect battery two remember these are brand new batteries so they always come with some voltage and that's going to be 3.2 on, on battery two now battery three is 3.244 perfect 3.245 battery four don't worry about the sign now battery number five 3.241 everything looks good so far battery number six is 3.247 perfect we 
we're gonna switch to battery seven now 3.242 basically the third decimal place is kind of about doing some difference there battery i think this is a now we're going to be for battery number nine 3.24 battery number 10 now we're going to go battery 11 3.24 as well battery 12 3.24 as well battery 13 3.24 look good everything looks pretty much perfect and i would say this is kind of the lowest 3.240 if any at that th third decimal place battery 14 now is 3.245 now battery 15 um this is the lowest 3.23 the lowest now moving to battery 15 i'm checking that twice 3.3234 now battery 16 3.242 so so we document the voltage for each cell they look good i don't see anything that you know kind of a uh, suspicious at this point everything look good let me let me pull the battery from here so you see it see the so you see all the information i'm about 3.24 so that's okay it looks good I'm gonna be installed this the way it should be put that back in that look good as you can see this is the most positive battery and this is the most negative and those two terminals are where the cables will come out the power will come out so and now what I will do, put the bus bar, and let's see how, how this goes. Let me move the camera. And let's go with that. Uh-huh. All right. So we are, we are here, ready to put the bus bar. We're going to start. That's the most negative. So. And there we go. It's going to be a kind of a zigzag. Put in the bus bar. There we go. We got that one already. We keep adding the bus bar. When we are doing this part here, it shouldn't be a spark at all. If there's a sp spark or something there's something really bad happening so you want to be you know no spark at this point you keep adding the bus bar the next one that will do The regular bus bar that you get from these kids sometimes are kind of a uh, smaller than what you need for the u-turn so you probably need to change to a different uh bus bar for that uh u-turn basically and uh, so i got those for this project right here so move a little bit further so now i got it right Now we go up, we use it now, we use that regular bus bar, and we keep going. Add the other one, 
one more I like this box because this allows me to go very easy on this adding you know getting my battery well organized and well protected at the end which is great uh -huh. adding the C here another one I'm missing the last one let's see where I, it is uh, where is it hmm. missing one here where is my storage of this post bar there we go here we go last last one here we go now I'm gonna tie this these terminals let's see these are my terminals and and each one well identified to avoid problem with this uh, spaghetti of cables and uh, when you install the cable you want to test right here at the cable that the voltage is going up as you move uh, in each battery so the voltage will increase by 3.2 as you go along on this on the serial number of the batteries until you hit the basically the last battery 16 will which will be about 52 volts so let me start to install these cables and I sh for this project I would like to have uh, pressure washers but I only have this type of bolt sorry of this type of, uh, of nuts only so that might do the trick I, I'm gonna go with this nut that come with the kit I'm gonna you know put them here right where they need to be need to go but not not tie them yet start to put these nuts where they should go again I would like to have pressure washers but I don't have for this part of the project so but never mind I'm still thinking where I gonna put the BMS within this package I'm thinking whether it's gonna be outside or inside you I see project where the BMS is put in top of the batteries that might be okay I'm not sure we'll see where where that BMS should be installed there's there's still room on this uh, in this box to put the BMS so I really like this box make life easier I put the package together and then I can move it anywhere you know and it fit the 16s perfect uh, they are not you know there's not you it's not a humongous box and and it's kind of a uh, the battery I keep like tight uh, remember the the large boss bar see you are doing this kind of configuration like a, a u-turn configuration I will call it so you have to have a kind of a larger boss bar for that so we keep putting the nuts here everything looking good so far no spark there shouldn't be a spark at all not here not at all so you keep you know putting together the whole thing adding the nuts here and there Uh, the cable for the VMS is kind of thin it's about I would say it's a cable that looks like a 22 gauge uh, there's not gonna be much of a of power on it and these are the terminals so to install the the cables on this uh, you have to sort of bend the cable a little bit to make it thicker so that it can tight pretty well when you pinch it right at the terminal so be careful with that always do a pull just to ensure that the cable is well connected as shown here let's see if the camera do the trick there we go mm -hmm. I hope you see it so you can see that one pinch the cable and the other one in on top of it and that's uh, I picked the file just to be sure that you understand what uh, what you're doing like you know 
you you have to label them properly user marker or anything that you have that can label them and uh, and that you verify that yes indeed that's cable number five when you go from the ground and up so be careful with that you don't want to screw up here I'm still putting the bolt right now as I said at the beginning I would like to have pressure washer on this project just because there's sometimes some movement the battery might move by themselves you know as they charge uh, and discharge that process tend to have some movement on this battery and that might lose the nuts on these bolts so you want to be uh, you know that's a concern check your you know how tight your nuts are after after you know a little while of using this system all right I think that we are done here we are not tightening this yet until I put the terminals for the VMS. Let's see. I'm in the process right now to put the cable, the terminals, and let's start with the most negative. Yep. This is black. That goes to into the most negative uh, pole on your battery system so let me put a nut here and 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 check that the terminal is you know doesn't pull out I'm gonna tie a little bit more by hand now you have to look for the right position of the, or the direction of the terminal but since I have installed yet the BMS, you know, that would take a little while, but keep that in mind. Now we are looking for cable number one for the first positive. I have a, a mess here with the cable. Let me pull them out. That's why it's good to have them properly numbered. Let me untangle all this. It's kind of messy. Cable number one right here. Now, let's see. Let's get this right. So it doesn't tangle anymore. Cable number one. Cable number one will go to the first positive. And uh, let me accommodate this terminal properly. As I, as I will be show, showing right now, all positive cable will go to positive terminals on each battery. So let me put the first one. This is going to be battery one. There we go. Try to get the move the, ca the cover for the cable out of the way so that you get a good fit, a good tight, a good connection between the bolt. And, uh, and the terminal so we are going to battery number two to the positive of battery number two see look for the positive always for the positive so we go battery number two now and we tie that a little by hand you know don't go don't go crazy on it not too hard so so right here I got cable number two remember that uh, I need to at the end to you know try to try to move a little bit this terminal when the when the I have the pos final position for the BMS cable number three to battery number three battery number three you know so now we go four We 
install cable number four. You know, take your time. You don't want to screw it up at this point that you are about to finish. So, you know, get cables where they should be. So we install cable number four, hand tight. And uh, I'm thinking that the BMS might be between uh, this between uh, this row of batteries here, uh, but I I don't know. We'll see. I have another idea for the BMS final position. So let me put cable number five. That's five. Let's look for num cable number six. The positive, remember? Positive. Always positive. We are looking for cable number seven. Cable number seven. It's great to have them la properly labeled, make life easier. So we get this cable number seven, battery number seven. We hand tight the nut over the bowl, and uh, that was battery seven. This is battery number A, the positive side. We are uh, we are halfway there. Let's connect battery number A. Battery number nine. I will check the terminal. Oops, that's ten. Should be nine. Yep. Be careful. That's cable number nine. We are going to battery number nine. Look the positive side of battery number nine. Now that was nine. Now we're looking for cable number ten. So we don't screw up this. So you got to kind of a double check here that everything is where it should be. You don't want to goof it up at this point. Although these batteries are not supercharged at this point, but it's not good to start to see spark at this prop at this point. And a spark at the bolt could be dangerous because it can destroy the bolt. And uh, if you destroy the bolt, then you are in another you know that's a that's you probably destroy the battery altogether so you make you make the battery uh basically useless you cannot tie properly a cable into it so you want to be careful here let's see where we are now that was cable 10 so let's 11 now 11 good we install cable 11. Uh, remember, I, I'm not sure where I'm going to be putting the, the BMS. So, and, and these cables are very short. The BMS cable are very short. You don't have, you know, so you, you don't have too much freedom where you're going to be putting their BMS. So, 
I'm not. That's why I'm not tying the tying this knot too much because I want I want to have some movement on the terminals for properly uh, allocating uh, the VMS position. We'll see. I'm checking that all cable connections are going into the positive size as shown here. Positive, always positive. Now we're looking for cable number 12. Put cable number 12. Cable number 12 right here. You know, ensure that the terminal is kind of a, you kind of a squeeze it within the bolt and then tie the knot because sometimes even when you put the knot, try to kind of pull out uh, the terminal out. So you want to be sure that it's, you know, that is well connected and hold it by the knot. So that was 12. We are connecting now 13. So we are connecting 13 to the positive battery number 13. We'll see. We are connecting this. We are almost done here. Again, what I like about this box that this is going to be, you know, this is going to be the end of the project. Uh, this battery will not move from here to anywhere uh, except within this box, unless there's a battery that got damaged or something. But yes, that's the idea that you don't want to you don't want to have your battery hanging all over the places. So. And this make kind of a, a neat project. You can transport this battery anywhere you need power 48 volt you know in this case for this battery this is cable number 14 cable number 14 that's flat use the flat side you know when you want to put this uh this terminals you try to use the flat part as best as you can because that would make life easier there we go we tie here this a little bit that was 14 all right so cable 15 put cable 15 here Cable 15. One more. 16. That's the last positive on this uh, system. Battery number 16. Which is basically where the positive cable will come out from this battery pack. But in the meantime, I'm going to put this here just to test uh that everything looked good we're gonna test now uh in a sec on the voltage in each terminal at this point we hand tied the 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 nuts but we're gonna check the voltage and uh that the voltage add up to what i have here this is the positive this is the negative we're gonna make uh, two holes to get the cable out so so the lid would be free to open and close as you as you want uh, as shown here everything went pretty nice to tie the bolt I will use a simple wrench here just hand tight a little bit more with a, a squeeze from my wrist not too tight because I, this because they will be i will be moving the terminal a little bit time to time so one thing that i will do is to ensure that this never fold within my battery pack let me put some tape on it wrap some tape so this wrench somehow the cup will not fall out of the socket so i can hand tight everything let me let me check here yep look good 
I'm still using a little bit of hand tight them. Mm -hmm. The terminal giving me some problem to get proper connection with the nut and the and the cup that I'm using. Let me check to be sure that is the right one. It looks good. Let me keep doing it. This I'm still doing a little bit of a. You see, this could be a problem, so you're gonna be careful never to so, uh, something fall into your battery pack that would be bad uh there we go i'm only doing a little bit of more of a hand tight at this point nothing more than that just to ensure a good connection for testing the cable the voltage at the terminals so keep going there not a big deal here everything look good Let me get this out of the way. That part there comes with the Ryobi box. I, I, I thought to put the uh, there on the on the gray box the BMS, but then I said now I I want to have the the lead for my uh, for my uh, Ryobi box free of any cable, and perhaps I will have problem with the distance if I install the. BMS on the inside the gray box so you see um, where I gonna be installing my BMS in a second I in the meantime I keep you know tightening this a little bit more uh, small hand tight that's it so that I still can move at a later time the terminals cables if I have to to get my the proper location of the BMS this is good You want to uh, after you do a, some hand tie, you you know you do a pull, a little pull on the on the terminal just to ensure that it doesn't fall out, you know, from the nut and bolt that you you know for the connection. So you have a kind of a secure connection and keep tightening this guy out to ensure that it look good. Everything look good at this point. remember no spark at this point shouldn't be a spark at all whatever you're doing there shouldn't be a spark at all so if we keep hand tight not much of a a little bit of a you know tight a little bit that's it and uh let's see where we are now here let me tie this one looking good let me tie this other one good enough how about this one good checking to ensure that the cable are where it's supposed to be uh, don't worry about the mess Hmm, I'm missing a nut here. Hmm. Yep, there we do. Keep doing this. Uh, you know you want to move a little bit the terminal just to be sure that yes and uh, that is well tight and it's well connected to the bolt and uh, so let's see this one and sometimes the yellow plastic kind of uh, make a little bit hard to get the wrench in place so that's why you see me kind of a uh, struggling a little bit with it just to ensure that yes the terminal is properly set we are almost there looking good
two more to go. This is the positive, most positive for the battery. Good. And this is uh, the last one that I have to tie. Gonna double check if everything looks good just at this point. Now, I'm gonna use this second wrench with a black tape and uh, just a little bit of, of a more of a, a kind of a, ch a check that is properly tight a little bit more so no big deal hand tight as you see I'm using the wrench right from the top I put my hand on the top of the wrench I don't put the I, I'm not using the handle too much because this is not about infinite amount of torque it's just enough that uh, everything is well set you get the experience of doing that sometimes it's the this yellow cover gave me some problem to get the I move a little bit with one hand and uh, until I finally accommodate the terminal properly. And my other hand is right there in case something uh, fall, don't fall and make a short circuit. So you want to be careful here. I should have used more. Uh, black tape electrical tape just to ensure that wood, uh, my wrench is properly covered right now as you s as, as shown here the tape is on the on the handle of the wrench so I'm using a ratchet wrench here just to go very quickly on how tight the bolts are and the nuts and uh, so looking good not going crazy about it just you know don't use the hand the uh, handle for this just right at the top what a little bit of what you feel for some resistance from your uh, in your wrist that would be enough you have a torque then use a torque wrench but I don't so I go with the feeling of what should be So I have checked the 16 batteries and uh, that they are tight. Uh, so now let's check the voltage at the terminal. So let me get myself together here to check that. Let me put the voltmeter right here. So let me put this right here and so where it doesn't fall because we're going to check the voltage I'm going to adjust the camera let's see what we're going to do is document the voltage uh, so I would be moving from terminal to terminal from negative and then put touching the first positive so let's go let me show you a second I'm connecting ground and now connecting the first you know touching the terminal for the first battery now we're going to the second battery there's a shadow bothering a little bit let's see if I can put this better adjusting the camera I have some shadow still bothering first battery again second battery 6.50 
sometimes it's hard to get those terminals within the end of the VMS cable. This is the third battery. Battery number four, about 13 volt. Battery number five, 16.24. The next battery, next battery now. Next battery, next one. The next one, one more, 39 volts. Next one, 42.2. Next one, 45.5. Next one, 48.7. And the last one, battery number 16, 51.9 volts. So, so the voltage is properly being, uh, you know, the cable it look good. The cable is showing the right voltage. So now we are ready to install the VMS. And let's see how this go. So at this point, the check of the terminal voltage is completed. So here we are. I was thinking about how to install the BMS and one thing that I realized that it kind of fits nicely at the end of the box where the terminals are located, you know, the positive and the negative. Now I have to put the negative. This cable is kind of thick, so you don't want to bend it too much. So the way I put the BMS right near the, neg the ground here, make perfect. So the negative for the equipment, uh, black one, uh, this black cable. So I, what I'm gonna do is put a pass-through bolt, and uh, for the positive, it's going. But for the positive, I would not to use a bolt. I will the cable will pass through the box. So now putting the BMS, you want to be careful with this terminal. So you want to watch out if you are pulling or the direction of some of these terminal is wrong, you know? So you want to ensure that again, you don't pull on the cable. This one is in the wrong direction. You want to go the other way. Now that you know where the BMS is going to be located. As shown here on the U-turn, this is the longest distance. So you want to be careful that there's, uh, you know, it's long enough that cable for installing the BMS properly without pulling on the cable. So that's the important part. So, so now we know where the BMS, we're going to try to connect this into the BMS and we're going to accommodate the terminals as required, you know, move them. I really like the BMS location now because it's easy to pull the terminal if I have to. At this point, we are pretty much done. We are just need to do a hole here to pass the bolt. I'm going to be using a pressure washer and, and uh, a pressure washer at the other side. So this case, so this is always tight. That's good. Remember that's the, that, that black one is going to be using for the, that's the negative for the, uh, for the inverter and the charge controller. So I, so I put the, the path through bolt and uh, you can see it's have a pressure washer, a regular washer, and then a path through to the other side. Uh, I have a, uh, there's a pressure washer, there's another bolt, sorry, a nut, and uh, and I have two bolts on this side, so this is the negative cable. So that's the cable that will go for the charge controller or the inverter. Now I need to connect the the negative for the BMS to the battery. For the positive side, what I'm gonna do is uh, pass a cable. A, I, I will I will pass through. I would not use a bolt. 
So, in the meantime, I would put a kind of a, a positive breaker for 10 amps just to be sure that everything looked good. So, here we are. I connect the the blue cable connected to the battery. As I showed you before, here's the pass through with the black one for the negative for the charge controller. And now I'm showing here the positive cable. I put uh, a red tape because it's a white cable. So I identify as a positive and uh, a pass through. And that eventually come out on the other side. So, and this one, the positive has a tiny breaker it's a 10 amp breaker just for testing something kind of weird or something bad happened during testing i'm i'm not pulling the huge amount of current this is for 10 amps again so at this point everything's done this this package is ready to go close the box and uh uh we do some testing and uh, and let's see let's see where we are before anything uh before i go let me do a quick check on the voltage uh the let me get let me touch the here about 52 volt 51.9 yeah i'm testing right at the break at the breaker just to ensure that the, yeah that the BMS is doing his job all right so the project is basically done and uh, there's nothing into it the BMS was installed I checked the voltage everything looks good uh, the cable are a little uh, still a little bit messy inside but I, I would not bother about it they look good the only thing left is close the lid Lock it up. If you want, you can definitely, there's a, you can put a, a lock here, you know, and get it over with. But it looks good, it's very sturdy box. I mean, this is a very strong box. You can put another on top of it, no problem. And they kind of lock each other with some kind of a locking mechanism that is behind here. You can see that there's a recess on this uh, area for locking another box on top of it. Uh, but very strong. I like this design and this setup. This box, as you can see, that's the number, and it's a what is called a medium toolbox, a Ryobi box. And that's basically it.